unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just the mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Tonight something is happening. And it's going to take you from one level to another level. In the name of Jesus. Prepare your spirit this evening to receive an impartation of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name. When the Lord told us it was working that year, it worked. How many bear witness? Yes. Hey. When the Lord told us experience upon experience, it worked that year. How many of you bear witness? And this year, God tells us it is the year of unlimited grace. How many of you believe it for yourself? Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody say, this is my year. Effective today. I'm entering a season. Where things become unlimited. I'm not going into limitation anymore. I said, I'm not going into limitation anymore. Somebody raise your voice and say, God, beginning this August, I'm walking on an unlimited life. If people think they have seen, they have not seen anything yet. If people think they have heard, they've not heard anything yet. The newspapers are going to hear about me. Media is going to hear about me. The devil is going to speak about Hell is going to shake because of me. The nations are going to hear me. Districts are going to hear me. Shout them in if you believe it. Father, we thank you. For the entrance of your word brings light. And give us understanding to the spirit. The integrity. The efficacy. We thank you. Even what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. Verses 9. The Bible says, For this cause, we also, since the day we have, we do not see to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He says that you may walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increase oh, in the knowledge of God. Somebody say amen. Verse 11 strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. I repeat that. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Somebody say amen. Amen. In light, who has delivered us? Somebody say he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The book of Job says that the power of God is unlimited. Somebody say, man, 
the power of God is not limited it is not limited human beings are limited your education level is limited the amount of money on your account is limited your wisdom is limited your networks are limited. Your connections are limited. Your abilities. They are limited. But there is a good testimony by God. That his power. Somebody say his power. Is unlimited. Somebody said the power of God. Is unlimited. Say it again and say the power of God. Is unlimited. Do you believe it? Now, when Paul is praying for the church, he tells them, I don't. I don't cease to give thanks. And I don't cease to pray for you. That you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. Follow me. Follow me. Paul wants you to know His will. The knowledge of His will. What He intends for you. Praise the Lord. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And the next that you may walk worthy of the Lord. The only way a man can walk worthy of the Lord is when you receive the full revelation and spiritual understanding of His will. Somebody shout hallelujah. Of His will. Are we clear to that level? So he's praying for them that they might come to the knowledge of his will that they might be filled with that knowledge. Because of that knowledge they will walk worthy of the Lord. Some saints don't understand that God has mandated us to walk worthy of Him, not to survive, to walk worthy of the Lord. You're wise as the Lord. And this is love made perfect. That you might have confidence on that day. For as he is, so are we in this world. The Bible says everything that ought to be known of God is manifest for God has shown it unto them. And it says even the invisible things of Him from the creation clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even is eternal power that men are without excuse. This is the life God has called That everything known of Him is manifest in you. Did you get it? This is what Jesus called you for. And the great calling of God and everything known of God is manifest in you. If God is known for healing, you are the healing. If He is known for Wisdom. You are the wisdom. It is not for wealth. It is not for life. You are the life. It is not by power. You are the power. I don't know what I'm talking to somebody. Everything known of God is manifest in them. That is when men look at you. They said, This is God. Let it be so to your life. I say Let it be so to your life. Let go to something in your life. Beginning August. Beginning today. That men will look at you. And they will say, This is God. 
There are things people can do in your life. And they're like, that guy is educated. There are things God can do in your life. And they said, this guy is rich. There are things God can do in your life. The people said, he's mighty. But there are things God can do in your life. And men simply say, this is God. This year, I speak upon my life. I don't care my ability. I don't care my success. I don't care the wisdom. Everything known of God is working in me. In the name of Jesus. May men look at you and say, Look at God. May they see you laughing. And they say, God is laughing. May they see you walking. And they say, Look at the Lord walking. Go as He is. Hey, hey, hey. You see, it's one thing when you're speaking from here, it's another when you start to speak from here. The gospel is a revelation. It does not take offense. It does not encourage. Encouragement is an understatement. The Bible says in him was life. And the life was the light of life. And that light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended Somebody say I have the life. Which is of God. Tell your neighbor, this is my season. I might not look like it. But this is my season. And there is nothing the devil can do. Because God has showed it to me today. I'm trying to show you some. That they might know the knowledge of His will. Because when they know His will, they will walk worthy of Him and be fruitful. Give it the Amplified. Of 110. He says that you may walk and live and conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing Him, desiring to please Him, bearing fruit in everything, good work, steadily growing, and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, and clearer insight, acquaintance and recognition. Somebody say, I'm increasing. In and by. In and by. I'm increasing in and by. I'm multiplying in and by. I'm changing in and by. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Next verse. We pray that you may be invigorated. Strengthened. With all power, according to the might of His glory, to exercise every kind of endurance, according to the might of His what? Give me the KJV. The KJV says, "We pray that you may be strengthened with all might, according to His glory." Because when you're strengthened, according to His power. Which is unlimited. I love what Paul said. Brethren, not many of us were wise. Not many of us were as strong. Not many of us were of might and noble character. But it pleased the Father. Somebody say it pleased the Father. That we might be called. According to his purpose. Paul says of whom I'm least of all saints. Was this grace given to me. To preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. He says that to make all men see. What is the fellowship of his suffering. Blessed be that God. 
you. That doesn't choose you because of your education. Blessed be that God. That doesn't choose you because of your goodness. He didn't choose you because of your nobility. He did not elect you because of your power. Not because you are the best. But because of his love. He called us by grace. Somebody say amen. Amen. And when Paul says that the church should be strengthened by his power, he knows the moment his power is revealed, you're unlimited. Listen to the prayer. I pray for you that you may know the knowledge of his will. Because when you know the knowledge of his will, you will walk worthy of him. How? Strengthen according to his glorious power. It was intended by God that we function in his power, not in our own power, not in our own strength, not in our own ability. Somebody shout a man. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14. He says, And God has both raised up the Lord, and he will raise us up in his words. Who am I talking to? The same God who raised Jesus, He will raise you according to His grace in His power. And when He's praying out your spirit, you're unlimited. First Timothy, Timothy chapter 6 and 16. The Bible says, Who only has immortality? Who dwells in the light that no man has seen and can see? He dwells in the light that no man can see. That means no man in the flesh has the ability to articulate. Only spiritual men can understand this light. And God, who signed out of darkness, has signed in our to give. The knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. What no man can approach is shining out of you. What no man can explain, no carnal man can interpret, is shining out of you. And that is why I decree and I declare that effective tonight, I'm going to confuse men because they are going to look at things and cannot explain of the light coming out of me. Save if they are spiritual. I'm entering unpredictable zone. I am entering an unpredictable zone in the name of Jesus. He says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And when Paul saw that light, he says, We have. This treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of power may be of yours. No, the excellence of power may be of the Lord. That's why he says, finally, brethren, be strong in the power of the Lord. In the power of the Lord. In the power of the Lord. Now let me go deeper. We have entered a season in the history of our nation. By the way, how many of you know something spectacular is happening in Uganda? The Lord spoke to me three years ago. And he told me I have sent a mandate that not many are ready to receive. Because of the state of their heart. The revelation of the person of Jesus has a certain response of spirit that can be confused because there are two men on the field 
and they both appear to be doing the same thing they are serving God but one man is elastic after the things of this world when Paul was talking about the people who left you he says Demas has left me for the love of this present world when Paul spoke of the present world he meant there is a world not present yeah. He means there is a world that cannot be seen. The things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen. They are eternal. And we are of the eternal excellence. And this is the eternal life. That if I know the one true God and his only son Jesus, God is raising men and women and they are seeing in the other realm more than they've seen before they have died to the love of this present world nothing can leave except it dies saints we need to understand the death with which we are dead in Christ the death with which we are dead in Christ Paul says I'm dead to the world and the world is dead to me what does he mean? he means to say that the things that men crave for in this world they are too dead to him God cannot use a man who is alive to this world because this world is limited the present world is limited the present world is limited. The physical things are limited. That is why the man calls you of the world and he says, Come up thither. God has to raise you to a place. How limited the world is. Competition, corruption, perverseness in the world. It's because. Men are submitted to a limited world. And they have to do everything to meet their needs in a limited world. You cannot go somewhere in the flesh so is again I want to move it. where you have not walked in the spirit. The full satisfactions of all appetites is the end of all perfection. Not only as the psalmist saw, but also that in the sea there was an experience of the appetites of those perfections. God is raising people who are dead to the appetite of perfection in the world because he knows we cannot live in this world and do supernatural things except if our appetites are dead from the things of this world and they are alive unto God he says brethren recall ye yourselves dead unto sin that are alive unto God I'm not talking of the sin of babes and the I'm talking of the sin of the mature men who are faith because they not abide in love in all knowledge and judgment and for such they cannot examine the things most excellent and because they can't the Bible says they have offense on the day of Christ for he is not a fool who should lose what he cannot chata sobra kuma to keep na kuma what he cannot chata sobra kufiwa and God is raising people we are living in the time where men are hungry than they have ever been hungry we are living in a time people are tired of drama people are tired of cheap talk do I have a witness people are tired of cheap talk people are tired of gossip on TV people are tired of gossip they are tired of 
to watch people put and on God bondage. is about to change something and in this land and I'm sending out a sounding warning of people who are removing Jesus off the pulpit and putting their chip buttons those days have come to an end people don't come to church to hear who say it and who say it people come to church that they might receive life and life to the fullest this is our season and God is raising men who are tired of politics who are tired of cheap talk who are tired of palanirako God wants to raise people and we are ready somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah there was a time what we said, uh, where men were ignorant. And in the days of ignorance, God winked. But now he calleth all men to repent. Metanoia. We are running out of time. We can no longer waste time in the most. If you are a teacher, teach. If you're a preacher, preach. If you're a prophet, prophesy. If you're an apostle, apostle If you're a worshiper, worship things. If you're a businessman, business. make money. If you're a student, excel. We have offended for so long. Because the revelation of the love of God has not been revealed. Let me give you an example. The Bible says, and Jesus moved with compassion, healed them. Do you hear that? That's the healing power of the heart of God. Compassion moves him and he heals the sick. There's a young man who wants a healing anointing. He just wants a healing anointing. After healing, Hallelujah. Even that one, I'm the one who healed her. Even the other one. The other one down. No, no, <laughs> Tell somebody those days have come to an end. Hallelujah. Can I say one thing before I finish? Am I allowed? One time, I had one of the most remarkable experiences of spirit. The most remarkable experience the of spirit. The day I really died in its revelation. See, when Paul says, Recon ye yourself, dead, it's one thing for a man to count themselves as a communication of their faith, becoming effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing which is in them, which is in Christ. That is wonderful, but it's progressive to the place that God will take you to the end of the experience. Of your faith. That when you come out of that experience, you're not speaking from faith. You're speaking from knowledge. Are you hearing me? I read stories of great men of God. Great men of God. The grandest on finish of the, the second great awakening. The, 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 the Amy Samples, my pastor. The list is endless. But all I thought in my heart was how can I read this thing and go to sleep? How? How? Do you understand what I'm saying? Except I'm, I'm indifferent. How can I read this thing and stand no more? And I made up my mind years ago. I will never be a normal preacher.
I refuse to be a normal business. I don't know who I'm talking to. If you're a businessman, also say. If you're a career person, also say. And now I see the disposition of the time we are living. Where God is pushing men to lock themselves up. Not see to get a job. Oh, uh-huh. if that man has locked himself up uh-huh. for a job, uh-huh. he wants to build a kingdom. Uh-huh. I don't know whether they have a witness. Uh-huh. The world has consumed us. Uh-huh. The day I had an experience of death, I saw one thing that I need to share with everybody. When the Bible says Bible gamba, the elements shall melt, the elements shall melt, the things that you see shall melt. Some of you need to see that everything physical, everything physical shall cease. Even the things you're seeing right now, one day they're going to be no more. The clothes you're putting on right now, one day they're going to be no more. There is one eternal thing, and that is the life of God. That is why we become born again. When you receive Jesus, you receive the life. And that life, the Bible says, that life is, is it immortal? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the only guarantee. The experience of that life gives your responsibility of spirit. You don't speak to your only to the dictates of what men speak to you. You speak the things that become. Because eventually, let me share this. When the revelation of this life hits your spirit, you are enlightened to one of the most wonderful things of God. And one of which is. That when you have something like the life of God, which is immortal, when you have something of God that cannot die, you realize that you're given power to change anything in the present world. Because everything in the present world is temporal. You stop speaking. From the things that are. That's the life of men. They speak from the things that are. And that is why the Bible says the wisdom of this world is brought to nothing. Why is it brought to nothing? Because they speak of the things that are present. And their presence causes them to think that those things are. Things are not because they are present. Things are because the man of life, a man with this life, has given them life. He said, Whatever you shall bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loosen on the earth, it shall be loosened in the heaven. Tell somebody, get to the higher life. Tell somebody, get to the higher life. It is a slow life. It's a very slow life to consider the present things of this present world as though they are. These things you see in the metaphysical world only exist because you carry a form of the body. 
It's the only reason why you relate to this thing. The moment you leave this body, you stop relating with anything you see. Some of you are waiting to die. Physically. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You don't need to die physically to function in that life. Welcome to that life while you're still in the body. Paul says I'm dead. Yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith. Oh, the Son of God. Not in the Son of God. He's not a survivor. Believing in God. He's dead. He is the embodiment of the faith of Christ. When Paul stands somewhere, the faith of Christ is operating on him. Come on, somebody. Say the faith of Christ is operating on me. It's operating in my life. It's operating in my finances. It's operating in my family. It's operating in my body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You don't need to die physically to enjoy this life. Enjoy it while you're still in the body. You will realize that you'll understand the balance between dying like a normal man and transitioning into eternity where with we were all called he says this is a record that God has given us eternal life and that life is in the Son Jesus when you die you live by the faith of of Christ. Christ. And when you live by the faith of Christ, you can't fear. Because you're not put on pressure to operate. I see preachers on pressure trying to please. They are still alive. I see prophets putting themselves on pressure to please. Evangelists putting themselves on pressure to please. The Bible has told us how to please. We please God. Study the word. That you might approve yourself unto God. And to God. A worker. You don't need men to approve you. Get into this thing. And allow God to approve you. By what you know. He sent a word to Jacob. And it lit the whole of Israel. Some of you, you think all you need is a breakthrough of 200 million. You don't need a breakthrough of 200 million. You don't need a job. You just need an encounter with God that will give you the ultimate experience of death. Because from that day on, you will leave. Nothing truly leaves. Except it dies. The life of God cannot work in us. While yet we don't have the revelation on what it means to die. I'm not talking about the things you know in your mind like your friend over there. I'm talking of the experiences that come because you've had the certainty of the things in which you've been instructed. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm entering an unlimited state. It's not for living men. It's not for dead men. It means it's not for living men because if they are alive, Little victories will consume them. There are people. They just need to drive a car. And they will never talk to anyone. 
There are people I know. They just get one house. And they will never talk to anyone. Some of them are educated. And because they are educated, they will never talk to anyone. Somebody simply promoted from one level. And a few millions. And they are not answerable to anybody. Those are alive men. Those are alive men. There are things they'll have issues in access. He says they ask and receive not. Because they ask amiss. They want to consume it from their lives. He said, Ask whatsoever you ask when you pray. Believe that you have received it. You shall have the petition which you ask. He was talking to dead men. Because if he's talking to men which are still alive in the flesh, the motive is weighed. And they want to consume it on their last. Some of you small victories can change. That's why you need to have the experience. Not the simple knowledge, but the experience of what it means to die. To get a man out of a wheelchair and he walks. And you still go to the face of God. And you tell him there is more. 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 You raise dead bodies. And still walk back home. And tell God there is more. And I'm as hungry now as I was last year. Somebody shout hallelujah. I see dead men leave. In our time than ever before. In fact, as I'm speaking right now. Somebody put up your hands. Put up your hands. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. May somebody have an experience. Because living is limitation. Living in the flesh is limitation. Acquaintance to only the present world is limitation. There are people in this crowd. You're going to understand what it really means to ask in his name. By faith, recall yourselves there. But I pray by God that this becomes a revelation on your life. The Spirit of God, right in a few seconds, is going to separate people. Some of you are having the real experience of what it means to die. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, start to bring them. Holy Spirit, power, Amen. Of the Holy Ghost. Can you start speaking in tongues? Start speaking in tongues. Something is happening. Something is happening. Speak in tongues. If you don't have tongues, speak in the language you understand. But tell God I'm entering the experience of what it means to die. Just raise your voice and speak to God. Come 
witchcraft is in trouble tonight. Witchcraft is in trouble tonight. Hey! Somebody say God is a healer. Listen. I feel tonight God has caused swellings to disappear. Fibroids. Any swelling. I heal it now. Fibroids are leaving. Abnormal swellings. Goitas. Goitas. I heal it. Goitas. Hand swellings. Armpit swellings. They are healing. Now. Listen. I want you to say these words with me. In the name of Jesus. I am unlimited. This year. I'm unlimited. The years ahead. I'm unlimited. Tonight. I have entered. Unlimited soul. Nothing. Will limit me. Nothing. Will hold me back. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Listen. God. Can't get a fibroid out of a body, and you worry about finances. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You just tell God, channel that on my debt. Channel it on my family. Channel it on my ministry. Somebody say this year. I'm walking a miraculous life. Like I've never walked before. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 42 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest